Okay. All right. We still have some people joining us, but I think that we can start. So, okay. Um, dear Nordic friends and friends of Nordics, uh, welcome to our Nordic Health uh, Virtual Market Entry Stakeholder Introduction Event. Uh, my name is Sami Askelainen from Nordic Innovation House, and I'll be your host today. So it is my great uh, pleasure to warmly welcome you all. And uh, I know that it's a summer holiday season currently at the, in the Nordic, so special thanks for everyone who is joining us from there, from your summer cottage perhaps. Hopefully you have a better view than, than us here in Singapore who are working from home. And uh, before we start, uh, some house rules as usual. So please note that uh, all the participants are automatically muted and uh, we will have a Q&A session then at the end of the uh, end of this webinar. So that's a good uh, opportunity to ask questions from our guests. Please use the Q&A function to do that. Our chat is disabled and uh, please also then remember uh, to indicate to which speaker your question is for. Uh, please also note that the session will be recorded and we will share the information packets with all participants after the event, including then all the presentation and uh, presentation decks and then the videos. So, very good. So today we are super, super uh, delighted and excited to have a Jeffrey Gui from Singapore uh, General Health uh, with us, uh, with his team. Uh, and for those one who are not familiar with the Singapore healthcare uh, system, so SGH is a part of Sing Health Cluster, which is one of the uh, one of the three main public healthcare clusters here in Singapore. And uh, Jeffrey is holding many very very important hats uh, at the SGH as uh, as a director of future health systems. He's also patient support and operations, and organization director. Uh, sorry, organization planning and performance director, and uh, he has uh, more than a decade uh, work experience with uh, SGH. So that said, uh, I couldn't be able to uh, to think better person who could be uh, with us here today from SGH and, and share what kind of solutions they are looking for. So thanks again for Jeffrey uh, and your team for being us here we are today, and a warm welcome. But uh, before we uh, hand over the stage to Jeffrey, uh, me and Paul Kastman from Innovation Norway will provide uh, a little bit more background information about Nordic Innovation House and also our Nordic Health Virtual Market Entry Program that will then take place in August and September. So um, Nordic Innovation House is essentially a, a community platform uh, accelerating high quality Nordic tech startups, scale-ups and growth companies in Singapore and in Southeast Asia. And uh, one key way how we are doing this is really helping them to connect to the right ecosystem stakeholders uh, here in Singapore. Uh, we are joint collaboration between all the Nordic countries and in our Singapore team uh, consists of people from Business Sweden, Innovation Norway, Finnish Embassy and then Promote Iceland. We are also supported by the Nordic Council of Ministers and Nordic Innovation. Currently we have 47 members here in Singapore from multiple verticals that we are working with on, on a daily basis. Uh, and on top of this, we have a very uh, specific focus on certain verticals, such as med and health tech, uh, sustainability and impact, and uh, smart cities. And in these uh, special focus areas, we are running these market entry uh, programs, uh, which are really, really good opportunity for Nordic companies to, uh, to meet the relevant stakeholders here in Singapore, understand what kind of solutions are, are needed here. So it's a really, uh, I would say excellent way to start building your, your foundations here in Singapore. And uh, like mentioned earlier, our Nordic Health uh, Market Entry Program will take place in August and September. And now uh, Paul will share more details about that. So on my behalf, welcome again. And uh, Paul, I'm gonna hand over to you. Um. Thank you, Sami. And then um, just let me know, I'll let you know that I'm struggling a little bit with my with my, my internet in the office. Second day back from uh, staying at the home office, and my office is uh, 
letting me a little bit down with the internet connection. But let's see how we can do this by, by the phone. Okay. So I have to rely on you switching the, the slides for me. And sure. let me know if there is a problem with the connection. Yeah. Uh, let me start off by saying that, uh, that I'm very happy uh, with the Nordic collaboration uh, that we have here in Singapore. Um, we've been doing this for a couple of years now, and uh, Nordic Innovation House is a, a good way to coordinate our efforts and, and to combine our strengths. Um, and as you pointed out, we're doing this in, in several areas this year, health tech being one of them, smart city and sustainability being others. And uh, we've done a, a couple of virtual mobilizations together so far this year, uh, two webinars to be precise, uh, one with the UNDP addressing issues relevant to the Southeast Asia region and another on COVID-19 relevant technologies for the public hospital sector in Singapore. Um, the, prog the program that I'll talk about uh, today was originally planned as a one week visit to Singapore in uh, March. Uh, but due to the pandemic, of course, uh, we had to change this. Um, and even though working life is sort of gradually returning to some sort of normality uh, for most of us, the hospitals are, are obviously still uh, in a challenging situation. And for that reason, uh, it will be difficult to organize a physical visit this year. Um, but in order not to lose momentum, uh, we've decided on an alternative plan this fall, and I'll I'll say a few words about that in a bit. If you could switch, please. Um, if we first look at why Singapore is a, an interesting uh, destination, um, they have an ambition to lead the development of modern and first-class healthcare solutions and concepts in Asia. And the healthcare providers are actively looking for innovative solutions. Um, Innovation Norway and the other Nordic trade promotion agencies um, with the support of Nordic Innovation House have been working uh, with many Nordic uh, health tech companies so far, uh, helping them identify specific problem statements and making the connection with the relevant stakeholders in Singapore. Um, the health care system in Singapore is presently going through a substantial transformation and the technology is playing an increasing part in the future of healthcare here. And there are many government agencies looking to that. Um, there are several reasons for this. I will briefly mention a couple of them on the next slide, but we will also get more details, of course, from Jeffrey Gui, uh, who's heading the Department for Future Health Systems in, in Singapore General Hospital, uh, the largest hospital in, uh, in Singapore. Um, I'm not quite on the next slide yet, but that's okay. Uh, and, and finally, I'd like to underline Singapore as a gateway to the region at large. Uh, using the experience and reference projects in, in Singapore as a springboard uh, for expansion into the region is important and should be part of all company strategies when entering this market. Uh, and it is expected that the Asia Pacific medtech sector will grow to, or go, grow from rather 88 billion US dollars in 2015 to uh, 133 billion US dollar by the end of this year, which means it will surpass the EU. Um, if we briefly look at the, some of the key challenges facing the healthcare system in Singapore today, uh, they look quite familiar to most of you. Um, an increasing elderly population, uh, which means decreased income uh, from taxes as a consequence, um, and with longer life expectancy comes rising healthcare costs, uh, as well as um, increasing pressure on hospital occupancy. And in Singapore, several hospitals are exceeding maximum capacity at the moment. And finally, there is a crunch on the availability of healthcare workers, which exacerbates this, this situation. Um, and as you can understand, the Nordic countries and Singapore share a lot of similarities with regards to the challenges that we are facing. Um, and Singapore hospitals are presently looking to strengthen the capacity and efficiency uh, at their hospitals while at the same time improving the quality of their services. And of course, during the pandemic, this change has just been, or the need for this change, more efficiency, more capacity has obviously just been underlined more significantly. Next slide, please. Um, turning to the program then, we are aiming to organize short webinars 
with key stakeholders in Singapore to help you better understand the public healthcare system, who the various stakeholders are, problem statements they are working with and seek solutions to, etc. cetera. Uh, and obviously, Jeffrey Booper is one such, is representing one such stakeholder. Um, based on these specific problem statements, we will recruit companies with relevant solutions to join phase two. Here you will pitch your solutions to the problem statement owners directly. In addition, we will organize meetings with investors and technology matchmaking agencies like EIPI or uh, intellectual property intermediary. Um, this is a subsidiary of Enterprise Singapore. Uh, finally, uh, following your presentations, we will set up individual meetings with those uh, hospitals uh, or other relevant uh, stakeholders that wish to have more detailed discussions. And this constitutes phase three. Next slide, please. Uh, the concept can be illustrated uh, like so. We collect the problem statements from hospitals and present them to you, basically companies and clusters in the Nordics. And then you help us present relevant solutions or stakeholders to the Singapore side. The Singapore side being hospital, government agency, investors, research institutions, and so on. Next slide, please. I mentioned uh, three phases, uh, and here is some more information about that. Uh, basically, the first phase will start today and run until 1st of August. It will include webinars with key stakeholders on the Singapore side, which will strengthen your understanding uh, of the sector and key stakeholders here. Uh, this phase will be open to everyone. And phase two will follow the application deadline 1st of August and will be an opportunity for you to present solutions to the problem owners, as well as meetings with investors, government agencies, technology matchmakers, etc. Phase three will then include individual meetings with the stakeholders. Slide seven. Next slide, yes. And this is what the timeline looks like. Phase one running until 1st of August, phase two from 17th to 21st of August, and finally phase three from 13th of September to 18th of September. And I'd like to remind you that an extensive slide deck is available on the Nordic Innovation House website, and you can check that out afterwards. Next slide. And these are some of the key stakeholders that uh, you will meet during the program. Uh, the Ministry of Health, obviously, and the Agency for Care Effectiveness, which is uh, responsible for improving the quality and, and the value of uh, healthcare through the application of health technology. Uh, there is the three health clusters, Sing Health, uh, the biggest one, uh, and the National Health Group and NUHS are the two others. Um, Others include agencies like IPI that I mentioned, uh, as well as IHIS, which is the technology agency for the public healthcare sector and also responsible for uh, coordinating public tenders. Um, in addition, we will have meetings with relevant Nordic stakeholders already on the ground, uh, in addition to ADB Ventures and uh, the UNDP. Next slide, please. So, um, if you'd like to sign up for this uh, program, you can either use the link at the end of this deck or you can contact your national TPO directly. Uh, the contact details can be found on the next slide. Uh, basically, Susanna or myself are contact points for Norwegian companies in this joint program. Uh, for Finnish companies, the contact point is Riku. For Swedish companies, it's Emil. And for Icelandic companies, it's uh, Dori. Um, and with that, I can take questions or, or give the floor back to Sami. Yes, thank you very much, Paul. Um, let's save the questions uh, for the latter part when we have the uh, when we have the Q and A session after after Jeffrey's uh, presentation. So, like I said, sure. that's that's the time when we can uh, when uh, all the participants have a chance to ask questions, either from Paul or from me or from Jeffrey. And uh, so we will save that time for that. And uh, next then, uh, I'm gonna hand over to Jeffrey from uh, SGH. And uh, he's also here today with, with his team member. 
so they will now share more insights than how SGH is engaging with the different, uh, different external innovators like startups and scale-ups and growth companies. So Jeffrey, uh, over to you. Thank you, uh, Sammy. Can everyone hear me all right because I'm wearing a mask? Um, are you hearing me okay? Yes, loud and clear. All right, that's great. Uh, thank you uh, to uh, Nordic Innovation House, uh, uh, Sammy, uh, for the kind introduction as well as Paul for giving the background to this uh, series of uh, webinar. Uh, we are very grateful for the opportunity uh, to uh, present to you Singapore Health Services and, and share a little bit more about uh, innovation in the public health care sector in Singapore. So I represent um, Singapore Health Services. Uh, in short, we call ourselves uh, SingHealth. Uh, and we are actually uh, one of the uh, three public health care clusters uh, in Singapore. So in Singapore, public health care delivery is actually broken up into three major uh, clusters or providers. So uh, we are SingHealth. We are on the eastern side of the country. And in Singapore, together with National Healthcare Group, which looks after the central region, and National University Health System, which looks after the western uh, side of Singapore, um, the three um, health clusters look after the uh, public health delivery in Singapore. So in, uh, in uh, SingHealth, we are a comprehensive uh, health care system, and we spend... Uh, across the system from primary care to quaternary care. And we comprise of 11 uh, different uh, institutions uh, within the cluster, which I will elaborate uh, a little bit more later. So in SingHealth, uh, or in Singapore, SingHealth is a major health service provider. Even though we are one of the three major clusters, uh, SingHealth actually has almost 50% uh, market share of uh, the workload or, or health services delivery in Singapore. So we provide close to half a million uh, emergency attendance, which is uh, about 45%. Uh, there are about 2.5 million outpatient attendances, uh, which is about 51% of the national workload as well as for uh, inpatient and day surgeries, uh, close to somewhere 300,000 uh, episodes, uh, which is about 49% of the uh, national workload. And in SingHealth, uh, what do we stand for? Uh, we are a cluster uh, that leads and uh, guide by the vision of defining tomorrow's medicine. So we want to be uh, the leader in uh, innovating care and delivering care that really matters to our patient. And um, we have three broad strategic uh, pillars, uh, which is in care delivery. Uh, we want to care to heal, and we want to educate to empower not only our patients, but also our healthcare professionals. And last but not least, uh, it's about the ability to innovate so that we can advance. So undergirding all these things uh, really is about the culture of our people, the leadership, as well as trying to retain the best talent for us to bring the best care to our patients. And this slide is a busy one, but it essentially shows our strategic map for Sing Health. So what really matters to our patients uh, is really they want to live healthy for as long as they want. They also want to be empowered in their care decisions. And our patients certainly want the best outcome at the most affordable cost. So at the heart of all we do in Sing Health, we really want to improve our patients' lives and really help the population stay healthy in the community. So in order to do this, we really need three things. We need cutting edge care capability. We need to deliver the right care at the right place at the right time, as well as we need a system that is financially sustainable. And this is supported by our people, 
supported by research innovation, and then supported by integrated operations. And we leverage everything here on a motivated, engaged workforce, a learning healthcare system, as well as a strong safety culture. So in SingHealth, um, this is uh, patient care across the continuum. So we want to provide a seamless patient journey that straddles across from primary care or care in the community to care in the acute secondary setting to even tertiary quaternary care as well as stepping down to intermediate long-term care. So you can see that in the primary community area, we have our Sing Health Polyclinics, SHP for short, uh, which work very closely with a primary care network of several hundred general practitioners. And this is a main referral source into the hospital systems. So the four bubbles you see in the middle are the four campuses that we have in Sing Health. We have the Sengkang General Hospital Campus, Changi General Hospital Campus, KKH Hospital Campus, uh, and the SGH Campus. And then providing specialists, uh, very niche specialist support across this campus are five specialty centers in the area of cancer, dentistry, heart, neuroscience, and eye, eye care. And on the right-hand side of this slide, you can see we have the community hospitals that actually help to bridge the care from the acute setting back into the community. And this is the entire regional health system that we provide for in Sing Health. Um, just a quick numbers for Sing Health Academic Med Medical Center. Uh, we have close to 30,000 staff, almost 4,500 beds in our system. And the number of residents that we have is about 1,000 plus. And our annual research funding exceeds 100, uh, 100 uh, million USD dollars. And, and these are the workload that I've described uh, earlier as well. And the healthcare challenges are no different from what Paul alluded to earlier. Our people are living much longer in Singapore. In fact, Singaporeans outlive Japanese, and we now have the world longest life expectancy at about 84 years. And currently, one in seven Singaporeans are aged 65 years and above. And in 15 years' time, one in three Singaporeans will fall into this category. Our age profile is no different from what you see in the Nordic countries as well. And the disease burden is going to increase uh, with conditions like diabetes, heart attack, cancer, stroke, uh, continuing to put a lot of stress into our health system. Fertility rate in Singapore is not very good. And therefore, we face a declining workforce. So coupled with an increased demand and a shortage of supply, these are eminent challenges that we face in the healthcare today. Um, and also from the chart here, you can see healthcare cost is rising. And this continues to play a very challenging role as we navigate this complex landscape. And also with um, strong emphasis on cyber security. Uh, this is going to play a major role as we roll in uh, technological innovations that needs to be compliant with uh, cyber security standards. So in Sing Health, we are expanding uh, in the coming years. So as you can see in this timeline, uh, we are building aggressively so that we can actually provide the necessary infrastructure and capacity to deliver care for our patients. So in 2018, we opened our newest hospital, Sengkang General Hospital and Community Hospital. And we are going to open uh, more polyclinics in 2021. And we have just opened the Ultram Community Hospital in Sengkang Tower. 
and we are going to remodel and build a new uh, facility for the um, accident and emergency department in SGH. And we are going to embark on a very exciting phase one development of the new SGH campus. The SGH building that you see today in Ultram is over 40 years old. And therefore, uh, this provides a very good opportunity for us to really reimagine care for tomorrow and build a campus that really encompasses uh, excellent care delivery supported by innovations and automation. And this is the campus that you see where SGH stands. The large grey block in the middle is SGH uh, main building. And along the peripheral, you can see the several specialist centres, like our eye centre, heart centre, cancer centre, dental centre, and we have neuroscience presence in this uh, campus as well. So we have served uh, Singaporeans for the past 200, and we are going to continue doing this job in the coming years. So in this new uh, map that you see here, we are going to remodel this campus and really redesign our infrastructure to deliver care that is more seamless for our patients. So these are some of the new developments that I spoke about earlier. And uh, these are coming our way in, these, in the years following. So we live in an uncertain world. I'm sure most of us here are familiar with this term VOCA, especially with COVID-19. Uh, you know, things are volatile, uncertain. Uh, we live in a very complex, ambiguous environment. So it is important for us to continuously look out, navigate the very complex, uncertain terrain, and try to bring the best possible best care for our patients. So what can we do in innovation? Collaboration is key. We can't do this alone, and therefore we need you, our innovation partners, uh, in this journey as we uh, redesign care for our patients. So this is a 4R model in response to, in particular, to say COVID-19. So in the earlier stage, we really need to recognize, understand the situation, and really involve the various stakeholders in the health system. And then we need to first adopt measures uh, that is most urgent, that's caused by the pandemic. And then we need to devise uh, satisfactory solutions to operate in a new normal. Things aren't going to be the same as in the past, and therefore we need to implement measures that really help us uh, reinvent some of the way we do, do things, as well as to devise uh, new processes. So what areas of innovation in COVID-19 uh, could we be embarking on? So there could be innovations in the area of prevention, containment, innovations in the area of treatment and healing, or maybe innovations in the area of continuity and disruption uh, mitigation. This list is by no means exhaustive, and these are just examples of areas that we potentially can collaborate with many of the esteemed partners out there. So from looking at uh, personal protective equipment, to looking at medical robotics, telehealth, to looking at things like virtual distance-based services, uh, as well as looking at data collaboration, as well as uh, um, data modeling, predictions, and tracking. So I'll pass on uh, the next part of the presentation to Cheryl, uh, who is my colleague in uh, FHS, and she will take you through uh, how Singapore General Hospital uh, envisioned the change uh, that will be coming our way. Thank you, Jeffrey. Hi, um, good morning to most of you. I'm Cheryl. I'm from the Innovation and Technology Unit of the Future Health System. So as an organization where we look at key principles of transformation, um, we actually have three that guides us. One is that we redesign care. Secondly is that we leverage on technology and automation. And we look at developing our workforce so that they continue to thrive and stay relevant even as we innovate. 
So the synergy between the three will then help to reduce waste, reduce costs, and increase value of the healthcare ecosystem. So what do we think about when we think about the future SGH? Um, it's very much anchored in the transformation of our key patient journeys, which you see here, the future inpatient journey, future ambulatory patient journey, and the future emergency patient journey. And these are supported by the three key principles I earlier mentioned. Um, when we talk about transformation, we actually look at all aspects of the care process. So this includes our patients, our staff, our mix of kids, as well as the community, the larger community. So dwelling into the respective patient journeys, uh, we like to think about how we can redefine the experience for our patients based on the various touch points. So starting with emergency, a patient will reach the emergency department either via ambulance or their own mode of transport. Within the emergency department, they go through a series of activities from screening, triage, registration, treatment, consultation, observation, medication before they are discharged or either they enter and they get admitted to the hospital. So with these touch points in mind, we then crafted a list of um, how, I need question, how might we questions where we place ourselves in the shoes of our patients, our staff, our mix of kin, and we think about how we can do things better for them. So for emergency, it could be how, can we, how might we improve patients' access to the hospital for emergency services, improve the flow of patients, and reduce time spent in the emergency department improve patient care management with clinical decision support tools for the clinicians, improve resource management within emergency department with insights from analytics, and improve the communication amongst the care team with patients and NOK for seamless management of care. So moving on, um, for the inpatient experience, typically our patients come in either through the emergency department or as a scheduled admission. They'll wait for a day, have their beds assigned, transfer to ward, where then there's the usual administrative paperwork and clerking that's done, and they'll stay with us until they get better before they get discharged either to home or to the community. So for them, how might we improve the waiting time of beds for patients admitted from the a &P? Improve the monitoring and surveillance of patients without increasing burden on the care team enable patients to be involved and empowered in their care and recovery, create a healing environment to improve patient recovery, improve the ambient noise levels of patient bed areas in cohort rooms, um, improve the collection of patient waste without manual intervention, create a ward that's environmentally sustainable, and improve the communication amongst the care team with patients and NOK for seamless management of care. So what you see here is, um, is an example, some elements that we think could be part of what we see as a smart world. It could include um, human-centric lighting, motion sensor floor lighting that will guide patients in the dark, automated waste collector and floor scrubber that will help us minimize the ground op support required, um, assisted bath system that will help to minimize the process time for both the patient as well as for the staff. But uh, regardless of the technology deployed, um, it is important that it yields real and uh, real benefits for patients. And this should be in the areas of like patient empowerment, where patients have control over their surrounding environments. It should provide optimal environment for patients to heal, to recover, and keep them safe. We should be able to improve patient experience um, and ensure that they still get the privacy they need. And we should leverage and automation to help to eliminate manual processes. So moving on to the ambulatory experience, typically our patients get referred to us either by external sources, polyclinics, general practitioners, or they call us directly through our hotlines to make an appointment. In the clinic, there'll be registrations, parameter taking, consultation, occasionally treatment, uh, medication, and then payment before they are discharged back home or they have follow-up care within the community. So with these touch points in mind, how might we then improve patients' access to hospital for consultation and treatment? Provide the right care at the right place at the right time using the right channel for clinical management. 
reduce the time patients spend in hospital for outpatient services, improve efficiency in business processes, improve patients' access to medication, empower and enable patients to take greater control, and partnership in their health management. Improve the communications amongst the care team with patients and NOK for seamless management of care. So what you see here um, further illustrates what I was just sharing. This is something that we have internally conceptualized on what we think could be the ideal future outpatient journey. So if I start with the pre-appointments, you will see that um, we envision that patients are able to do everything outside, off-site at their own convenience at home. So these will include things like filling out specialty-specific questionnaires before coming for their appointments, being able to verify personal information, do mobile registration, um, appointment management, and have easy access to any of the visit information you might need. Upon coming to the clinic on appointment day, um, with a mobile device, they can easily do check-in, wayfinding within the campus, uh, receive real-time notification on their wait time to appointment so that they can anticipate how long they have to stay in the hospital, have DIY measurement taking, which will then automatically interface to the clinician dashboard, and have easy access to their test results on their mobile apps. During consultations, uh, for so certain specialties that have more structured text, we do think that speech to text documentation will be useful. And of course, having a clinician mobile dashboard will provide a lot of convenience to our care, our care providers by having easy access and to the medical history, to the investigations and questionnaires that patients fill out. Uh, we would like to have our doctors and care team be able to uh, provide, to send uh, all the rather health education materials for our patients so that even after the consultations, they can go back home at their own time, see, read these articles so they can better look after themselves even outside of the hospital. We would like to have auto appointment scheduling, which will be very useful for patients that have multiple appointments in the same institution. And a consultation summary is something that we feel it's good and it's something that will be available to patients after the consult, uh, where the doctor will dispense uh, maybe three key advice from the consultation, some medication advice for them to follow up and to look after themselves till the next time they see their doctors. And after consultation, this is where we see the patient should be free to go home. So all post-consultation activities should be something that patients can easily manage um, and have them done off-site. This will include things like medication management, payment, as well as providing feedback for the consultation. So within the hospital, actually, there are many pockets of us who are looking at and deliberating and dreaming about how we can make things better for our new SGH campus. Um, I think we will continue to dream. We will think about things that are bigger, bolder. And yet, at the end of it, we will always keep what our patients need, their well-being at the center of it. And the hospital is also continuously innovating. And this is a belief that um, we have adopted when we think about innovation. We think that you need to think big, start small, and act fast in order to succeed. And with that, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh... Okay, thank you so much, uh, Jeffrey and Cheryl, for sharing this. Um, I have to say that pretty, uh, pretty impressive numbers in terms of volume. That like how much your system is 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 treating uh, with all these uh, uh, different uh, sectors. Also, the plans for the future are, are really, really impressive. So, really looking forward to seeing all of this. Um, coming in action and in life, and hopefully there are also some space for the Nordic solutions. Uh, very good. So uh, now it's time to basically move to the Q&A uh, section. And uh, so for all the participants, please use the Q&A uh, function uh, to ask questions. You can ask questions directly from Jeffrey or, or Cheryl, or then from me and Paul regarding the, the program or Nordic Innovation House in general. But of course, today, 
because we're so lucky to have Jeffrey and, and, and um, Cheryl here. So uh, let's use this and ask as many questions as possible. Um, also, a special thanks for Cheryl to, to sharing all of those, the problem statements areas. But that was a, that was really good to kind of like go through. Uh, that helps really understand us better, better kind of like what are the areas where you are looking for, for different collaboration of opportunities. Very good. So we had one question already here uh, in a Q and A uh, session. It came in earlier, so I just called that through. So uh, the question was regarding the applying to the program, which will take place in August and September. Uh, when is the confirmation date for the participants? As, as we, yes, we do have a limited seats in, in, in the program. Uh, so application period will end um, uh, end of July and we try to confirm it basically during the first week of August because then the program will already start in, in a couple of weeks after that. So then the participants would have time to also do uh, to prepare. Very good. Um, and then let's take the next question. So uh, this is for Jeffrey. Uh, why are you cooperating with Nordic Innovation House to link potential solutions uh, from Nordics? Um, okay, thank you for the question. So, so essentially, um, the countries in Nordic, uh, the Nordic area actually has a very similar uh, demographic profile as Singapore. And the challenges that uh, the, the health systems in the Nordic country uh, face is also, also quite congruent to what we have here in Singapore. And, and therefore, and uh, we all know that, uh, you know, in the research and development frontier, the Nordic countries are, are very advanced. And, and therefore, we look towards to very innovative solutions uh, that comes from the various uh, Nordic companies. And, and we have actually been to uh, Norway recently as well in a study trip uh, to really understand and, and learn from some of the uh, companies uh, in their solutions and offerings. And I'm, I'm very sure that there's a lot of value uh, that the Nordic companies can bring uh, to the healthcare sector uh, in the areas of uh, innovation and technology. Very good, thank you. Uh, so the next point is for Jeffrey as well. Uh, you mentioned that you're running out of properly trained personnel. So does this also apply to surgical uh, operation theater uh, staff? Um, so in, in general, um, the assumption, uh, or rather the, the data that you saw earlier, that we are in need of about 9,000 or close to 10,000 healthcare workers. I think this is actually a, a question of our society demographic. Uh, because of uh, low fertility rate, uh, our population is shrinking, uh, probably similar to some of the Nordic countries as well. So actually, the, across the board, uh, healthcare workers are, are short in general. So really from nurses to doctors to pharmacists uh, to administrators, uh, we, we are actually in need of talent uh, out there, really not just uh, uh, surgeons and those who work in the OT. Good. All right, let's move on for the next, next question. We have a very active audience today, which is great. Uh, so again, for Jeffrey and Cheryl, uh, what would be the expected duration and process for test bedding and integrating these health solutions uh, to these challenges and problem statements uh, mentioned? So I would say it depends. Um, typically, we would like to approach it um, from a proof of concept. We would like to do it as a pilot. So because we, I mean, once we are familiar with technology, once we understand how it works, we like to implement it on a smaller scale in a selected use case in a chosen department that feels relevant. And then we'll test how it actually works in an operational setting before we actually even think about scaling up further for full implementation. So pilots can take, I mean, depending on the technology and what you're testing, it could be a few weeks to um, a few months. Yeah. Okay. And maybe I'll, I'll have actually a follow-up question for that one. So what is the good way to engage with the SGAs if you want to seek those collaboration opportunities? Uh, who the companies can, can contact? Is it uh, directly to, to Cheryl and Jeffrey, you guys, or is there a process? 
Yeah, so, so usually uh, what happens uh, through the, uh, this channel, I mean, uh, Paul, uh, Susanna and team uh, has been most helpful the past years. Uh, we've been engaging through uh, Innovation Norway and they breach many of these uh, prospective uh, uh, companies. So we have been very active with uh, uh, Norway Health Tech. Uh, that was one uh, group that actually helps to bring uh, many potential partners uh, to us. And, and, and very important thing is that uh, the companies uh, uh, should or must be offering uh, solutions that address our pain points. So like Cheryl has alluded to, uh, we have many wish lists uh, in the areas of uh, emergency patient journey, inpatient journey, and ambulatory patient journey. So we've got to match um, the solution to our needs. And if there's a match from there, uh, we, we continue to uh, take on this conversation to discuss how can the solution fit into our landscape? Uh, should the solution be adapted? And if so, how do we uh, work towards uh, proving the, the solution in our setting uh, before we adopt and implement it in our health system? Good. And, and of course, this is the, uh, one of the purposes why Nordic Innovation House with, with all the, uh, the Nordic TPOs are running this program. So that's, that's really the uh, great avenue to engage then with the right people, present them, and then kick off the one-to-one, -one, through one-to-one -one conversations, uh, uh, kick off the uh, potential projects and pilots and POCs uh, from, from there. Uh, okay, let's go back to Q&A. Uh, this is also related to the surgery uh, process. Uh, is there a need to improve a surgery process by, for example, decreasing OT time, uh, reducing surgical failures, or, or re-operations? Um, um, definitely. So, so we have uh, over many years uh, look at what we call OT optimization. Uh, as all of you would know, OT uh, is probably one of the most expensive assets uh, in the hospital, and it's very important that we utilize uh, our operating theater uh, most optimally. So we have uh, studied the OT of utilization and optimization closely over the years, and we have rolled out uh, many initiatives that help to improve the process uh, from scheduling uh, to the in-theater processes, uh, uh, really to, to look at efficiency. And secondly, I think the other point is on the outcomes. Uh, we are also starting to look at a uh, value-driven outcome, uh, really measuring the, uh, the surgical outcomes and what really matters to the patient and, and delivering value to them. So this is certainly an area that is constantly on the back of our minds. Very good, very good. Hi, I'm Sami. Uh, yes, Paul. Oh. I have a quick question. Uh, I was thinking about, we were talking about um, pilot testing, proof of concept and proof of value and so on. I'm just wondering um, when there has been a collaboration in this area, there has been a proof of concept and it has concluded successfully, what would be the next step uh, for such a collaboration to progress? Could you elaborate on that perhaps? I think that could be interesting. So, sorry, you mean what is the next step if there's a proof of concept or POC that's successful between a, a company age? Okay, maybe I, I, I saw a question that uh, is linked to a uh, tender bid. Uh, maybe I might take this question as well as what Paul uh, just asked together. So, yeah. what really happens in our uh, landscape in Singapore? is that we actually have a procurement agency uh, that looks after the entire public healthcare uh, sector. Uh, this agency is actually called ALPS. So this is called ALPS, which is Agency for Logistics and Procurement Services. And this ALPS uh, takes care of all procurement matters for the Singapore Public Hospital. And of course, each institution is unique. So in this instance, say for example, SGH, 
after testing a proof of value or concept of a particular solution. And we are very interested to bring it uh, live into our system. We would normally proceed on to do a, a, a RFP or request for proposal to invite uh, potential partners uh, to put their proposal in for uh, this particular solution. Uh, if the solu there are many of such solutions out there. And of course, if the solution uh, is uh, totally exclusive to the company and no one else uh, has it, uh, there could be uh, the, the route of uh, waiver of competition or, or, or a non-RFP award uh, for such needs as well. So it really depends on uh, what we are actually looking at procuring. Does that make sense, Paul? Yes, thank you. Very good. Okay, let's move forward then to the next one. So um, any innovative solution uh, introduced for infectious waste treatment uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, I, I wouldn't say that, that there have been many innovations around this area, but clearly COVID-19 has increased our waste load by uh, 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 leaps and bounds. So we have uh, been you know, managing large volume of waste. Uh, I think similar to many of the countries uh, in the world, uh, we also look at reprocessing some of our PPE, like N95 masks, uh, looking at some uh, sterilization to actually improve the useful life of the PPE so that we can reduce uh, waste. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, waste or rather uh, infection prevention, we also introduce uh, things like uh, uh, UVC cleaners, uh, uh, disinfectants that help us to uh, look at uh, cleaning up our water after each turnaround of patients. Okay, very good. Uh, then the next one, uh, uh, this is more generic, but uh, and also related then to the, uh, to the tender process. So uh, does Nordic solution provider require uh, to be a Singaporean, uh, meaning do they need to have a Singapore business register to be eligible to participate in, in these RFP tenders? I don't think it's a must uh, uh, to have a Singapore business registration to be participating. Uh, but that said, uh, we normally, you know, would encourage that the company has some presence in Singapore or the area for ongoing support. Because the, the last thing really we want in the healthcare, public healthcare institutions uh, in, in today's setting is we have gotten the technology on board and the support uh, for the technology uh, is hard to access after we bring a technology or solution into our system. So some, uh, I would think, uh, more importantly, is the uh, support that we can receive uh, ongoing uh, should we be using the particular solution uh, to solve the problems. Okay, good. Thank you, Jeffrey, answering that. Um, okay. Do we have any more questions from the audience? Paul? Yes, maybe I could ask a question because I was wondering um, what is, um, I know that obviously this department, the future of, of, uh, of health system, future health system department is, is working a lot on digital technology and, and artificial uh, intelligence. What is the status and what are you specifically doing or, or what projects are you involved in in the use of artificial intelligence uh, in the diagnostics and so on? Could you say a little bit about that? Sorry, Paul, can I trouble you to repeat your question again? 
Sure. Um, you're you're uh, heading the future health systems uh, department, and I know that you're working on artificial intelligence as part of the area that you cover within that department. Could you say a little bit about the projects that you're involved in with SingHealth at the moment within the area of AI? So there are a few uh, uh, areas of involvement in AI. So I think maybe we can break down AI into a couple of areas. So one is in direct clinical applications. Uh, secondly is what we generally term as community applications. And then the third area is operations uh, application. So uh, in terms of uh, operations, uh, where we are headed in AI uh, really is to look at how we can really amass the large amount of data to look at smart building management, uh, 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 ways and so on and so forth. Uh, and this is one area. And then um, the area in terms of um, um, clinical applications. So some of the examples that we are uh, looking at in terms of uh, diagnostics and things like that is really like using AI to improve uh, imaging. Uh, this is one area. Uh, really using AI to help the physicians with uh, um, clinical decision support in terms of diagnosis. So maybe an example I can uh, give you is uh, we are starting to look at things like x-ray images of uh, people who are susceptible to osteoporosis. And then by just looking at the x-ray images and then by applying some uh, measurements from the images, uh, this can actually uh, derive an osteoporotic score that can actually predict uh, the risk profile of this per person uh, for osteoporosis and therefore the clinicians can then uh, right side the appropriate uh, interventions uh, for um, these patients. Another area of AI application in terms of clinical uh, would be antibiotic prescription. So we are working very closely uh, with our pharmacists uh, to really look at how we can look at data and the clinical prescription of antibiotics and really recommend, suggest uh, the appropriate dose, uh, duration, type of antibiotics uh, that could uh, help uh, in the management of the treatment. Uh, you probably know in uh, published literature that Singapore actually has the highest uh, uh, prevalence, uh, point prevalence of uh, antibiotic prescription, which is actually not very desirable uh, for our patient profile. So we really endeavor to improve in this aspect. So these are some examples of uh, AI uh, in the clinical areas, uh, in the operations area. Uh, of course, in the community area, we'll be uh, looking at using data from uh, remote monitoring, and things like that to help manage our patients uh, back in their own homes and community. Right, right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I hope that we have time for one more question. We have one more question coming from the audience from, uh, from Minna. Uh, so do you approve applications provided by uh, consortiums? Is this question for Nordic Innovation House? What do you mean by application? Apply to I... what? Yeah, good. But I understood that this is like if there is instead of one company applying to or, or is responding to your problem statements or, or POC or tender. So it's uh, instead of one company, it's been a consortium. I, I don't think there's uh, such restriction. So. Okay. In short, it's no. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And that's actually quite an important point uh, as, as many times these um, problem statement areas can be quite broad, broad right? And uh, might not be one company is not able to provide their, the comprehensive solution for that. Very good. Uh, okay, uh, we managed to clear all the questions from the audience, uh, Craig, and we are now running out of uh, time. So, uh, I would like to thank you, Jeffrey and Cheryl, really to, to be here with us today, sharing all the information. And thank you for also all the participants uh, joining us today. Uh, we hope that now everyone 
uh, have a better understanding about what kind of solutions uh, SG8 is looking for and uh, how our Nordic Health virtual market entry program looks like. And uh, we'll, we are looking forward to seeing most of you in also in our next stakeholder introduction session and then in our program in August and, and September. So thank you again for everybody uh, for joining us today and stay safe. Thank you, Sammy. It's our thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you.